Okay, here we are, attractive effort. This is part one, possibly, of I don't know how many parts. We'll find out as we go along. 20 questions, let's make a start. So where did attractive effort come from? The attractive effort equation was first published by Francois-Marie Gaino de Pambour 180 something years ago. If you take this year and you subtract 1836, that's how long ago it was. I'm not particularly brilliant at maths. The attractive effort equation is my practical limit. So it's getting on to 200 years old and we're getting on to 100 years since steam locomotives entered their final period of evolution. Yet tractive effort is still relevant today in the comment sections of various YouTube videos. It still appears as a ready reckon in books like uh, Mr. Miller's Steam Locomotives of New Zealand as a ready way of comparing locomotives. Yes, yes you can, but it's an incorrect definition from Steel Roads of New Zealand, second edition 1974, tractive effort, aka tractive force the power exerted at the wheel rim by a locomotive irrespective of speed. The last three words are incorrect. Tractive effort is dependent on speed in a steam locomotive context. Now that's a shame that Steel Roads of New Zealand has that error in it, yet it still remains a useful book. It never purported to be a technical volume. It's also a shame that the equation they quote is incorrect. It's not the lowercase s, it needs to be squared. It's the lowercase d, and I'll explain why later. So maybe there's a better definition. Yes, there is. The Locomotive Dictionary, fourth edition, 1916, which is a technical volume written for technical people, defined tractive effort as the effort exerted by a locomotive in turning its wheels by the action of the steam against the inside face of the pistons, which, through the media of the crossheads, rods, etc., causes them to revolve and the locomotive to move along the rails. At starting speeds, a locomotive will usually develop, at the rim of the driving wheels, the rated tractive effort, which is calculated from the dimensions of the engine. The formula for simple engines is... And here you have it. You'll notice that it is the diameter of the cylinders in inches that is being squared. That's appropriate. The easiest way to understand all of that is to go back to Francois-Marie Garneau de Pambour, who literally wrote the book, the first ever book, on the mathematical modelling of locomotive performance. As part of his modelling, he needed to understand how much of what was then called motive effort was needed to move the locomotive without any wagons or even the tender coupled to it. So he took a locomotive at the end of its duties, he adjusted the spring mechanism on the safety valve to give a crude measure of boiler pressure and did a series of experiments to find the least amount of boiler pressure needed to move the locomotive. You can see the results here and you can see the difference between mucking around with the safety valve compared to using a bit of mercury to determine pressure. The Atlas locomotive is what we would today call an 040, likely similar to Samson for which a drawing survives and the 040 type is of course commonly known as the Dido. Interestingly, when he did the same experiment with the 022 wheel arrangement locomotives similar to rockets, he found that the safety valve showed a negative pressure and the mercury showed that those locomotives could move with about half a pound per square inch of pressure in the boiler. Right, the easiest way to demonstrate it is this. This box has a surface area on its top of about a square inch. The pencil case weighs about a pound. If I put the pencil case on top of the box, thus, this face here is exerted to the pressure of one pound per square inch. 
on the locomotives used on the Liverpool and Manchester railway back then, a common working pressure was 50 pounds per square inch. What we do, if you look back at the equation, is that we multiply the boiler pressure, multiply it by the number of square inches on the working face of the piston to get the amount of force exerted against the piston as it moves through its stroke. Then with a bit of mathematical jiggery-pokery, we multiply that force by the combined travel of the piston strokes required to turn the driving wheels through one revolution, and then we divide it by the circumference of the driving wheels. And that gives us the force exerted against the rails. No, it's a bit different to what's in the locomotive dictionary definition. That definition is about a locomotive's ability to pick up its train and get it moving. Whereas what Deep Ball wanted was to know the amount of the 50 pounds per square inch in the locomotive boiler was being expended on overcoming the friction points in the locomotives he studied those friction points being located here, 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 and here. So, simple equation, 50 pounds per square inch from the boiler, less four pounds per square inch being lost to those friction points, means that 46 pounds per square inch is available to the directors of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway Company to use to make money. That's not a question, that's an assertion, but let me address it. Deep and Bohr's equation is different because, like I've just said, he was more interested in what it takes to propel a locomotive rather than a locomotive's ability to propel a train. So his P for pressure is the pressure required to move the locomotive, so it's the 4 PSI. In the locomotive dictionary equation, the pressure is the pressure delivered from the locomotive's boiler. In a Liverpool and Manchester context, that's the 50 PSI. So there's the difference. Can I run Atlas through the more modern equation? Yes, absolutely. If we do that, we start by squaring the bore of the cylinders, so that's 12 times 12. We multiply that by the stroke of the cylinders, which is 16. We multiply that by the boiler pressure, which is 50. We modify the boiler pressure by uh, 0.85, or in other words, 85% of the boiler pressure. And then we divide that by the height of the driving wheels, which is 60. We arrive at 1,632 pounds of tractive effort, which sounds legit for a locomotive of that diminutive size and power. We can then compare it to this Dido example from the 1870s in New Zealand. It has a tractive effort of a little over 3,000 pounds per square inch, and that's at 80% of boiler pressure. Okay, it's running a bit long. Look back for part two. Cheers, like, subscribe, enjoy. Thank you.